One way to factor an expression is to use the GCF. The easiest way to find the GCF is oftentimes to use the birthday cake method. You can use the birthday cake method even when factoring or finding the GCF of an expression, an algebraic expression. Let me show you how. We have the expression 16xy minus 48xc. Let's go ahead and try to find the factored version of that expression using our cake method. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next screen. I'm going to write this down again. So 16xy minus 48xz. Just like I would do if I had two simple numbers and I wanted to find the GCF, I will make the cake. The first thing I want to do is figure out what factor goes into both the um, 16xy and the 48xz. Well, I could start with a 2 because I know that they are both even and I could start with 2. 2 goes into 16xy 8 times. 8xy. Don't forget to bring down the xy. That's part of the term, so you must use it. And then I like to keep my sign with me when I'm doing these so that I don't lose track of it. 2 goes into 48xz 24 times xz. Don't forget xz. Okay, That does not look factored to me, so we need to continue to factor. Um, what could go into 8 and 24? Well, I know 4 could, so let's put a 4 here. I'm taking the long way, just so you know. You could have gone an easier way to do this, but I'm showing you the longest, one of the longest ways, just so you'll get an idea of how to do this. How many times will 4 go into xy? Well, 4 goes into xy two times. So let's write a 2 here. 2xy. Don't forget that xy. Then bring down your minus sign. 4 goes into 24 six times xz times. Still, we're not quite all the way factored, are we? So let's go ahead and factor one more time. The only thing that will go into 2xy minus 6xz is a 2. So let's put the 2 here. 2 goes into 2xy xy times. Bring down your minus sign. 2 goes into 6xz three times. 3xz. Now some of you might think, oh, cool, I'm done now. But no, there's still one more thing that I can see that both terms have in common. Do you see what I'm seeing? Yes, it is your x. Your x is in common with both of those expressions or terms. So let's go ahead and factor that x out. If I divide the x out, I am left with y minus 3z. Okay, so now what do I do with all this information? What is the factored version of my expression? Just like we always do when we do our cake method, to find the GCF, we multiply everything on the side. We should continue multiplying everything on the side. Somehow I had a little pause in my video. So we would end up with 2 times 4 times 2 times x, which gives us 16x. Okay, then what do we do with that? We need to take this piece of data, the bottom layer of the cake, that comes straight down into the parentheses y minus 3z. So the factored version of our expression is 16x times y minus 3z. Now, there is a way to check this, and I'm going to do that on the next screen, and that is using the distributive property. To use the distributive property to check your expression to see if it is factored correctly, you should take the factored version, which is 16x, sorry, 16x times the quantity y minus 3z, and use the distributive property to multiply. 16x times y is 16xy minus, is, stays the same because six, a positive 16x times a negative 3z gives us a negative 48x xz, which was our original expression. So that means we did it correctly. Good job. All right, I hope this helps you in factoring expressions. It's just another tool in your toolbox on how to do this kind of work. Bye for now.